Welcome to Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas. I'm not Jesus, I'm Tim, but I'd like you to join me the next 26 minutes. You're gonna be blessed and you'll be praying, won't you? That God will touch the folks that tune in. Welcome to Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas. Thank you, friends, for tuning in. And uh, it is a delight to be here every week. And I uh, just uh, thank the Lord that uh, he, didn't, he didn't kill me as I was growing up and doing all those stupid things. I'm so grateful. Wait till you hear who we have on today as a guest. You are going to love this guy. But first, I felt impressed to read Psalm 91 in light of what we're going through today. Lord, bless this reading of your word to our hearts. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy right side and ten thousand at thy right side right hand but it shall not come nigh thee only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in thy their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Aren't those wonderful words, John McTiernan? Uh, yes, uh, Brother Tim. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Well, we uh, we had some technical problem and uh, it was on your end, but apparently it's been resolved, so I'm oh, on your show now. Good, good, wonderful. Well, for folks who are not, not, not familiar with you, you're the founder and de uh, defender of, founder of Defend and Proclaim the Faith Ministries. And you've sent, spent thousands of hours uh, with Jews and Muslims debating and corresponding in defense of the gospel. During numerous appearances on television, radio, and in seminars, you've publicly defended Israel in light of Bible prophecy. Your current best-selling book is As America Has Done to Israel. Since 1975, you've been involved with the pro-life movement, and you're currently a pro-life leader in central Pennsylvania. And in the early 1980s, you co-founded International Cops for Christ, where he serves as an ordained chaplain and evangelist. And I just want to encourage people, when you see a police officer, go up to them and thank them for their service. I give them a track or tracks, and I say, if you know of anybody who's suicidal, here's a free movie on suicide. These are the Ray Comfort movies, and it's fullyfreefilms.com, the movie Exit. And they're very, very grateful, nine times out of ten, uh, when I do that. But um, uh, <clears throat> what? Well, uh, well, Tim, I listened to your introduction, and thank you, but it's outdated. I'm in Texas now. Okay. And a couple of things, so I'm going to have to get an updated <laughs> um, information like that. All right. Okay. Let me ask you, when you're, when you're talking with our Jewish friends, um, and you're trying to win them to the Lord. Is it Isaiah 53? Is that 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 those are the best verses to to win them to the Lord? Well, that's a very very interesting question. Um, it is now you, you can make headway talking to the average Jewish person, uh, but if they've come under Rabbi's teaching, it's a whole new ball game to uh, deal with them about the truth of the gospel and that Jesus is their Messiah. Mm -hmm. Uh, years ago, when I was in the service, uh, my best friends were Jews and blacks. 
because they had a sense of humor. I'm not saying nobody else did, but that's the way it was amongst my circle. And we were like the only integrated table in the chow hall. Uh, the blacks would sit over the right-hand side, the, la- the whites on the left-hand side. And this is in Wiesbaden, Germany. And uh, when, um, uh, our, when Dr. King was killed in uh, 1968, our cities were burning back here in the States. And uh, I had another friend who said the problem is the Jews and the blacks. We get rid of the Jews and send the blacks back to Africa. We won't have any more problem. Well, I stupidly started getting stuff the American Nazi Party, George Lincoln Rockwell. And I, I didn't hate my friends. I continued to eat with him, but I hated the Jews and the blacks out there. And uh, I ended up getting kicked out after three years and nine months. I had extended 18 months to go to Germany. I had given a Zig Heil to uh, the commanding officer in Armed Forces Day, and I got a general discharge under honorable conditions. I went home, and I was talking to my dad, my Baptist preacher father, about how the Jews own this and Jews own that. And Dad listened very patiently. When I finished, he said, Tim, a person cannot be a Christian and hate the Jews. I said, how come? He says, Jesus is Jewish. And it, it just never dawned on me. And then I heard a Another pastor say that every spiritual blessing we have, we owe to the Jewish people. If there were no Jewish people, there'd be no patriarchs, no prophets, no disciples, no Bible, no Messiah. Jesus himself said salvation is of the Jews. Uh, when, you, when you encounter uh, anti-Semitism uh, amongst Christians, professing Christians, how do you deal with that? Uh, basically, just what you said. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, what I take it one step further, <clears throat> though, I, this this verse has real impact on those people. Uh, let me go to the book of Revelation in chapter 5. And uh, verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, now listen to this, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seal, seven seals thereof. Mm-hmm. So in heaven, the Lord is known as a Jew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's from the lion. He's a lion from the tribe of Judah. Yeah. That's where the word Jew comes from. Yeah. What do you say to um, people, uh, George Lincoln Rockwell, who was the head of the Nazi party, used to bring up that verse in the Bible talking about the synagogue of Satan. Mm-hmm. How, how do you deal with that? Well, if you read more, it says who they are... Says they are Jews and they are not. Mm-hmm. What is so that? They're, what, what they're is fraudulent. That? Mm. They're pretending to be Jews. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For yeah. whatever reason, I mean, that's what they were trying to do, and the uh, the Bible was warning of those that uh, are uh, are not real Jews. Mm-hmm. Now I've heard that uh, if you're going to win a Muslim to the Lord, you read John nine thirty five through thirty eight to them where Jesus says he's the Son of God, and you ask, when do prophets lie? Uh, they consider him a prophet. Uh, what, when, when I would go into CCDC, I would, I would tell the, the prisoners, I'd say, listen, let's compare the life of Muhammad and, and Jesus. Muhammad was married to an eight-year-old. We call that pedophilia. He killed 800 people in his life. He said just before he died, I don't know if I'm going to make it a paradise or not. Jesus was born of a virgin. None of you guys were born of a virgin. Neither was I. He lived without sin. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He died on the cross. Our Muslim friends don't believe that. But he rose three days later. Over 500 people found that. I mean, you know, there's a billion Muslims out there. You would think that they would look at the life of Muhammad and Jesus and compare the two. Duh. Well... That's that's one approach. My approach is a testimony of what uh, Christ, through the Holy Spirit, did in my life. And I use uh, Luke 4.18, about, that's the ministry of the Lord. And he came to, uh, he was anointed to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor in spirit. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and set at liberty those that are crushed or oppressed of the devil. And I give that testimony about only Jesus Christ can heal the brokenhearted. And I 
been preaching now in uh, a lot of countries where there are a lot of Muslims. And that scripture, Luke 4.18, has won tens of thousands to them. Wow, that's great. They all, everybody has a broken heart to one degree or another. Yeah. And imams respond to it. Uh, Hindu priests respond to it. When you think of it, Tim, what is there in Islam that can heal a broken heart? Well, yeah. What is there in it? What yeah. do they offer? Right, right. In Hinduism, what do they offer? Hope of reincarnation is a higher level. Mm-hmm. And you look at even just just religion. Just just take uh, um, just we'll say Christianity. It's there, but unless you have a living relationship with Christ, and you ask Him, you pray. Mm-hmm. Uh, you forgive, and Lord, I have a broken heart. Heal it. Mm-hmm. Heal my broken heart. Come in and heal my broken heart. Mm-hmm. That's his ministry. So I found that very effective across the world. Luke 418, because there's no psychiatrist, psychologist. There's no drug now, uh, well, prescribed drug. People are self-medicating nowadays. Mm-hmm. Now they have terrible broken hearts, and they're, they're they're self-medicating and overdosing and dying. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's no ten steps to this and eight steps to that. Right. Only Jesus Christ can right. heal the brokenhearted. So that's what I've been preaching, and it's been so effective, uh, Brother Tim. Mm-hmm. Incredibly effective. Effective. We're talking with John McTernan. His uh, website is usaprophecy.com. Uh, He's authored a book called As America Has Done to Israel. If you had an opportunity to sit down with President Biden, what would you say to him? Repent, beg God for forgiveness, Mm -hmm. confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that he died on the cross and shed his blood. And he'd have to be prayed over, I think, to to, uh, be set free from demons. (laughs) I think you're right. Oh, well, what, what has happened to America when we have stiffed Israel, looking back on history? Well, there's been a price to pay, and <laughs> tremendous disasters have hit America uh, at the very same time. I'm going to say we were bullying Israel over the to dividing the land. Uh, Katrina is one of them. Katrina... Um, Bush Jr. was uh, really bullying Israel, and Sharon was the prime minister then, to unilaterally pull out of Gaza and turn it over to the Palestinians as a sign of good, good um, now sportsman is in my mind, good gesture. All right, mm-hmm. that we really that Israel really wants peace. So they did that, and uh, virtually matching up for the day, uh, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, slammed actually it, it slammed into southern, southern florida first and that was the direct tie and then it went through southern florida into the gulf and then struck um new orleans mm. so hurricane katrina was headlines as uh israel was pulling out of gaza under the real pressure of george bush jr now here's the thing in this brother tim um, in in January of the next year, they held an election, and who did the Palestinians vote for? But Hamas. Mm, mm-hmm. And from that day on, Hamas. Uh, well, Hamas has a covenant with. They made a covenant with their Allah, and mm-hmm. in one of the uh, parts of the covenant is they have they want to destroy Israel. No compromise. Mm-hmm. No treaties. That Israel has to be destroyed, Jews have to be destroyed. This is Allah's land, and all. And mm-hmm. so, from that day to now, um, there's been war. Mm-hmm. There's been war. Yeah. So that goes back to George Bush Jr. The Jews would not have done that yeah. if it wasn't under pressure from the United States to uh, twist Israel's arm. And I, I also. Tim, I want to, in case you're not aware and your listeners are not aware, this war now, because Israel has declared war mm-hmm. on uh, Hamas and Hamas has declared war on Israel, uh, but Hamas has named this war. And it's called the, it's called Operation uh, Alexka 
Now, we would say Alexka Mosk Deluge. That's what the official title is. So it's about Jerusalem, and it's about the Temple Mount. That's what they said this war is about. That's what they're fighting for, to, to free, well, or, or actually Israel, but specifically Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. I, it can't become any more prophetic than that, Brother Tim. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. they have called this war. Yeah. Well, uh, how close do you think we are to the end? Well, <laughs> when you read, uh, I, I preach and teach on uh, the book of Obadiah. It's the smallest book in the Bible. It's one of what's called the minor prophets. And verse t- um, 15 says, chapter 115 says, The day of the Lord is near upon all heathen. As you have done, or as as uh, thou hast done to Israel, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall be upon thine own head. And you go down to verse 18, three verses down, and it talks about an all-out war between the house of Jacob, which is the Jews, and the house of Esau, which would be the, the Palestinians. And as a result of this war, um, none of them are going to remain in the land. This is an all-out war, and the uh, Israel is going to be cleared completely of the Palestinians. And this is the sign. This is the sign. There's a physical sign in the Bible of the day of the Lord coming, which is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That's physical sign, as I just shared it with you, with you and your your our listeners here. This all-out war, when I, I personally believe now, because I've been teaching this for, oh, I, in fact, my book is America's Done to Israel. That's in the book, mm. um, which was pretty close to 30 years ago. Um, there's a physical sign, and that sign now, this war, could be the very sign that the Bible's talking about, that the second coming of Jesus Christ is very close. Mm. We're heading to like immediate... Yeah. I had a friend, uh, Bob Friedman, who wrote, uh, What's a Nice Jewish Boy Like You Doing in the First Baptist Church? He's home with the Lord now. But he said he was, he believed the Lord was coming before the tribulation because the the church is not mentioned after Revelation 4, verse 1. Uh, what would you say to those who believe that the Lord's coming after the tribulation? Well, when I... <laughs> There's so much to say about that, but it's you look at chronological part of the book of Revelation, we are at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're the bride, he's the groom, and the Bible says, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. When the marriage supper of the Lamb is over, heaven opens, out comes the Lord with the bride following him. And he comes to, when you Revelation chapter 19, what we would call uh, Armageddon. Mm. And then from there, he would go to Jerusalem. So we're in heaven with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Mm-hmm. And post-tribulation, what about the marriage supper of the Lamb and being in heaven? That, that's what I point yeah. these people to. You, you've got things all twisted around and mm-hmm. and. How the, the bride is in heaven. In fact, it's not called. The, we're not called the church anymore. Mm-hmm. We're called the bride. Amen, brother Tim. I uh, had a friend who who said, you know, if if at the marriage supper of the Lamb, Jesus turns to Mary and says, "Is it okay if we start now, Mom? We're all in trouble." But uh, yeah. but anyway, uh, uh, were you well, were you it's the blessed hope? Yeah. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, 2.13, looking for the blessed hope Mm -hmm. and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the blessed hope is the rapture. So that's what we're to live and look for. We're not looking for the Antichrist and the tribulation period and the wrath of God being poured out. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right, yeah. Yeah, this is... uh... This is, boy, we're coming close. Um, do you think, uh, what, what were your thoughts when President Bush called uh, 
Islam a religion of peace? Intellectual suicide. Yeah. I mean, you, the, it, politics, politics do terrible things to people's minds and morals and character. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Brother Tim. Yeah. When I was in uh, Ken, when I was in Kenya a few years ago, we were handing out tracks, and I would talk to Kenyans. Um, they would say two things about President Obama. He was born there, and he was a Muslim. Uh, do you think he's a Muslim? I think he's a hybrid. I think he's a communist Marxist, mm -hmm. and he's very comfortable with Islam. Yeah. And he also wears a ring. Did you see the ring that he wears? I don't know if he still is, but that ring he was wearing. Mm. And there's a, there's a monkey on the ring, and that monkey is part of some, like, pagan religion that's in Indonesia where he was. Uh -oh. So he he wears a ring that's associated with a pagan, a pagan group. Everything about him was he's a communist, mm -hmm. and yet there's no doubt about his affinity and all to Islam. So yeah. does he actually come out and have a turban on and a prayer rug? No, no. Mm -hmm. But his affinity towards it, and so many Muslims that were appointed, and when he when he gave that the first speech, he went to all those countries, and he remember he bowed to the king of Saudi Arabia, right, right. And then he went to Egypt, and he apologized for America, and all. And you know, it's it's a new relationship with Islam. Yeah, we were attacked for no reason right. by them right. in yeah. nine eleven. But yeah. he did everything as like a Muslim mm -hmm. liberal would yeah. do. We only have a couple of minutes, John McTiernan, the author of "As America Has Done to Israel." The website is. Uh, usaprophecy.com. Uh, for those who are listening who don't have the assurance of salvation, could you uh, could you deal with them right now? Yeah. Um, in my preaching throughout the world, Brother Tim, I found a verse in the book of Revelation that clearly tells us how the people got there and how to have uh, assurance of eternal life. Now, what, do you think the testimony from heaven carries weight, Brother Tim? Absolutely. Right? Yes, absolutely. I yeah. mean, if the book of Revelation there is about heaven, and it's a huge throng. It's 10,000 times 10,000s and mm thousands -hmm. and thousands that are in heaven. And Revelation 5, 9 says, for thou, for thou were slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood. Mm -hmm from every tribe, every language, every people, mm -hmm. and every nation. They're telling us that they're in heaven through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, and he shed blood. We're redeemed by his blood. Mm -hmm. We are sinners, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. There's a penalty for death. God is holy. Mm -hmm. um, sin can not be in his presence. And Jesus Christ became sin for us, died on the cross, shed his blood, mm. that our sins could be put on him, Brother Tim. Amen. Amen. And that God's holiness was satisfied by the death of the Lord Jesus. And in heaven, let me repeat that, mm -hmm. for, thou art, for thou art slain and, and redeemed us to God by thy blood mm. from every tribe, every language every people, and every nation. So we live in the United States, and you may be broadcasting all over the world, mm -hmm. but that's every nation. And heaven is huge, 10,000s times 10,000s yep. times thousands and thousands yep. um, by every people. Well, that's culture. That's color of skin. Mm -hmm. that, that, so whatever culture you're from, whatever the color of your skin is, God doesn't care. Mm -hmm. What he cares about is that you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood to pay the price for your sin. Amen. Every language. Amen. Well, we speak English, but I'm sure, Brother Tim, in uh, Las Vegas, you hear a lot of different languages spoken there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, every one of those languages, God says, heaven is full of people with all the different languages. Yeah. And then every tribe, every like every kind of group of people. 
have the ability to have John, John, we need to run. Uh, USAProphecy.com. And uh, if folks would like to help me out uh, on one of the programs, if you could call Alyssa and say you'd like to pay for a program, that would be great here at the station. John, thank you so much for, for being with us today. Make sure you pick up that book, As America Has Done to Israel. Uh, how can they get that? Can they get that through USA? prophecy.com yeah yeah they can they can uh but i tell you right now it's probably best just to go to amazon i hate to say it okay but it's probably it's best. Got, gotta run gotta run okay. thanks so god much john you, god bless you brother you take, take care bye-bye Bye now. thank you so much for joining us today on jesus and tim in las vegas if you don't have the assurance that you're going to heaven when you die you need to repent of your sin right now. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sin. Come into my heart right now. And if you're on the verge of suicide, go to fullyfreefilms.com, fullyfreefilms.com, and watch the movie Exit. I hope to see you here, there, or in the air.